Class, class. Last class, we started off with the uh, first, I mean, with the laws of thermodynamics. I said there are three laws. There are three laws of thermodynamics, one, two, and three. I mean, first one is called the zeroth law. Okay. And then you have the first law, and then the second law. Our focus is mostly on the first two laws, which is zeroth law and the first, and the first law of thermodynamics. So basically, what is thermodynamics? You know the dynamics part of it, right? What is dynamics? Dynamics, uh, you know, in mechanics, you've done dynamics, which is you apply force and you move things and it suffers an acceleration and it actually um, results in work being done and all those things. And now we are talking more in terms of thermal, okay? In thermal uh, sense, Thermodynamics simply is talking about how energy, thermal energy is moving back and forth and the law of conservation of energy, including the thermal part of it. You have done law of cons conservation of energy before. That is potential energy and kinetic energy and all those things, right? Now, this is bringing in the thermal component. That's why thermodynamics is a separate thing. The first law... I mean, the zeroth law of thermodynamics is a very basic law. That's why it was numbered that way. Now, what is this basic law? If you have <coughs> a container A and a container B, so you have container A and container B, and you have an object C, If C is in thermal equilibrium with A, now what is the word thermal equilibrium? So this zeroth law is talking about thermal equilibrium. So the law that talks about thermal equilibrium is the zeroth law. Now thermal equilibrium simply means they, they mean the same temperature. So when two objects are at the same temperature, which way will the heat flow? When two objects are the same temperature? Which way will the heat flow? Equal rates. They will flow both ways equally. You can't say there is no flow. There is flow. But the flow is at equal rates. Okay? So, if A and C are in thermal equilibrium, which simply means A and C are at the same temperature, because thermal equilibrium can only come if there are two objects at the same temperature. If the temperature is different, definitely heat is going to flow from a higher heat uh, concentration area to a lower concentration area. <clears throat> so if I keep a hot object in this room, however small it is, heat is going to go out from the object more than what it is coming into the object. Get it? So if two objects are in thermal equilibrium, which means they are both at the same temperature. So the zeroth law says this, if C is in thermal equilibrium with A, and at the same time C is also in thermal equilibrium with B, if C is in thermal equilibrium with A, and C is also in thermal equilibrium with B, then what? A and B are in thermal equilibrium. That is a very basic law, a basic what do you call it? common sense understanding of these things. So that's why it is numbered the zeroth law. Again, if A is in thermal equilibrium with C and C is in thermal equilibrium with B, A and B should be in thermal equilibrium with each other, which simply can be uh, translated to you have two containers and this is a thermometer. If that's a thermometer, then the thermometer is in equilibrium with this, which means the thermometer is reading a certain temperature. And the thermometer is also reading the same thing here. So naturally these two are in thermal equilibrium. Get it?
Um, that's the uh, zeroth law of thermodynamics. There's nothing much in that. Then coming to the first law of thermodynamics. First law of thermodynamics <coughs> is all about energy conservation. The first law of thermodynamics is all about energy conservation. Now, when you talk about energy conservation, what forms of energy does can, can an object have? Okay. Now, again, our focus is more on the heat energy part of it, heat. This table right now has what kind of energy? Potential. Yeah, the potential kinetic energies are more mechanical. I'm talking about heat related. Yeah, internal energy, right? This table has internal energy. And what is that internal energy made up of? Potential and? Kinetic, but more microscopically, not the whole thing. Like the whole table is not moving. The whole table doesn't have kinetic energy. The overall kinetic energy of the whole table is zero, but the particles are moving, right? And the same way, the whole table has a gravitational potential energy. We are not talking about that. We are talking about the potential energy that is elastic. Like if the atoms are moving away from each other, there is an elastic energy buildup. That is the potential energy we're talking about. So, this table has internal energy. How can this internal energy be increased? Tell me some way by which this internal energy can go up. Heated. Heated. That's number one. So, if you have an object, you can increase. So, the internal energy is symbolized by the letter U. Internal energy is symbolized by the letter U. <coughs> the heat that we put in or take out is symbolized by the letter? You know it. Q. Q. Yes, so heat energy that is going to go in and out is Q. So as you said, this internal energy can be increased you can expect a change in internal energy if you supply heat energy directly to it. That means I put a heater underneath and just heat it. All right. I put some heating source and heat it. Or using my warm hands, just touch the table. So I'm heating it. You get it? What's another way of increasing the internal energy? Is there any other way of increasing the internal energy other than heating it directly? Yes. How do you do that? So you're trying to put something on it which actually reacts with the material, that's what? Yeah, which also comes to almost this because like if it is an exothermic <laughs> reaction that you actually you are making in contact then it's going to heat up. The heat is actually transferred from that reaction to the object. Anything, any other way, yes? If you charge it electrically, internal energy is... No, internal energy is not going to be affected. The internal energy is basically the kinetic and potential energy inside the, inside the material. How can that increase is my question. Is there any other way of increasing that? Think of it more practically. You raise the table up higher so that's more... Which one is again? You can raise the table up and lift it up. So it, but the potential energy we are talking about is the oh. molecular potential energies, though, though they won't change. If I take the whole table in an aircraft, it does not change the internal energy. You understand? Now, the airplane is moving fast. It has kinetic energy, but that doesn't matter for this table. The table's internal energy does not depend on how fast you take it as a bulk. It is the RMS velocity and all those things. Those things are matter. Yeah. Depends on the phase change. A phase change, which also is a consequence. But uh, okay, right now there are molecules moving here, right? How can you make it move faster? 
That's all my question. Yeah, like, what, what, what yeah. say, say that again? I, would say, I was going to say pressure. Pressure. You're kind of close to your to the answers. So you're, he's trying to say apply pressure, which is like push it, and make, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Did you just heat up the room? Oh, that again will come to this. Heating. Heating is basically a procedure by which you push the energy into the object. That's all. Hitting it. Huh? Hitting it. Hitting it. Just hit it. One is heating it and the other one is hit it. Which means what? Heating is actually a, where you apply a pressure and by hitting it, what are you actually doing? You're doing work. So work is the other thing. So if I work on an object, if I work on an object, the object is supposed to increase its internal energy. I can work on an object by hitting it. If someone slaps you on your face, won't that part get heated up? Have you felt it after the slap? That part will get so heated up sometimes it leaves bruises. I mean it burns. It burns. It's actually like the marks that you see there, they're burns basically. Created by the extreme concentration of heating at that spot. Why? Because of the work being done. Think of driving a nail with a hammer. When you hit a hammer, uh, when you hit a nail with a hammer, are you heating it? Are you sending heat into it? No, you're not sending heat into it. You're actually doing work. And when you do work, consequence is the increase in internal energy. Like if I'm going to use a drill, you know, a drill. You drill something for a little while, feel the little bit, it will burn, you know, it will be so hot. Why is it hot? Because of friction, there's work done. There's work done with friction. Nobody actually supplied heat energy there. Nobody supplied heat energy. The heat is a consequence of work being done. When you do a workout, your body temperature goes up. Right? That's natural. You're doing a workout. When you do this, this goes up. So that's why your body temperature goes up and you start sweating to kind of calm, cool it down. So work is something that is a very important quantity in this case. Now the connection between all this is written as the first law of thermodynamics and that is this. The change in internal energy that can be caused is as a result of heat minus this. That is called the first law of thermodynamics. Delta U is equal to Q minus W. Okay, so delta U is equal to Q minus W. Now what does delta U stand for? You can write it down. Delta U is change in internal energy. Of course we need to know what is the sign convention that you're going to use. When is delta U positive or when is delta U negative? Delta U is positive if U goes up and delta U is negative if U decreases. Okay, if the internal energy decreases, that means delta U is supposed to be negative. Q <coughs> is a heat. <coughs> Q is positive if heat is supplied to system. When heat is supplied to the system, that is when you have Q as positive. Like you put in heat, then that is positive. Q is negative if heat is removed from system. <coughs> now what I'm calling as a system could be anything. This table is a system. Okay, it can be anything. Q is positive when heat is supplied to the system. Q is negative if heat is removed from the system. W 
his work. W is positive if work is done by system. If the system is doing work, then W is positive. W is negative if work is done on the system. So W is positive if work is done by the system. If this table is doing the work, then that is positive. W is negative, work is done on the system. So I'm doing that, and that is work done on the system. So these are the sign conventions that you're supposed to follow. Just pay, pay attention to this, especially there can be confusion here. These things are easy to understand. But this one, there can be confusion. If the work is done by the system, that is positive. Yeah. What would be an example of work being done by the system? We're going to discuss about it. Now we're going to look into more examples of this first law of thermodynamics. Okay. Yes. Uh, so when you say work is positive, does that mean that you're still subtracting it from? Oh yeah. This is this is the format of the actual equation. Okay. When work is positive, this quantity is positive. Okay. This minus sign is part of the equation. Okay. When work is negative, this quantity will turn out negative. And I'm going to discuss about different different situations right now. So can I take this off? Now, let's take, let's take the example of this light. The light bulb is the system. Okay? The light bulb is the system. So, light bulb. For the light bulb, you're going to see how the first law of thermodynamics is applied. So, let's write the equation down. Delta U is Q minus W. Okay. For the light bulb, tell me this. Delta U, what is it? For the light bulb. Oh, let's let's we're going to do it for a period of say five seconds. We need time also, right? So in a five period, five second period of time for the light bulb, how do you write this equation? What is delta U for five second period of time? What is delta U? What is U standing for? Internal. So what is the change in internal energy of the light bulb? It, within the five seconds. So, no, no, no. Within the five seconds, what do you know is happening to the internal energy of the light bulb? Is it increasing? What do you mean? It's in kind of equilibrium. In other words, is the light bulb growing hotter and hotter and hotter? Or is it like steadily at one temperature? If I check the temperature now, and after an hour if I check the temperature, is it going to be hotter? It's not going to be hotter. It's going to be the same. It's already reached thermal equilibrium already. So in other words, the temperature of the light bulb is not changing anymore. It's not growing hotter anymore. Yes, when you turn it on initially, it was going up hotter, right? But now it is not. So what is delta U for the light bulb for the five seconds period of time as it is operating now? Zero. Now, Q stands for what? Heat. Heat. Uh, is heat supplied to the light bulb or heat is taken out of the light bulb? It's taken out? So what do you think is Q? Positive or negative? Negative. Now remember Q also kind of means energy which also includes light energy. So this light bulb is spitting out a Q which is in the form of heat and light. Mostly light. Right? So what do you say it is? Positive or negative? Negative. It's a negative quantity. And let's find out how much it is later on. That's a negative quantity. And this minus sign I'm writing as it is. 
Now let's talk about the work. Work. Is the light bulb doing work? All work is being done on the light bulb. The, the bulb is doing work? Yeah. How does the light bulb work? How does it work? You have to push something into it, otherwise the light bulb is not going to work by itself. You just check a light bulb and say, come on, start working. It's not going to work. You got to make it work. So how does the light bulb work? Light bulb, any kid will say that. How does the light bulb work? Light bulb works on electricity. So what is doing the work? What is doing the work? Electricity is doing the work. Now how much work is done in five seconds period of time if the wattage of the bulb is 32 watts? The power is 32 watts. And so in a period of five seconds, how much is the energy? How much work is electrically done on it? Someone said it. 160 joules. You know this. Power is equal to work over time. So work is power times time. So 32 watts, five seconds. So 160 joule of work is done what? On it. Positive or negative? Negative. So it's negative 160. Now can you tell me that if I'm going to, if I say this is x, can you tell me what is that? 160. If you solve this, you get minus x. And x is 160. Or if you want to just find out Q, if you just write it as Q, as an unknown, what happens here is 0 is equal to Q plus 160. So what is Q? What is a minus sign for Q tell? That heat and light is coming out. You're not supplying it. It is coming out. So you are applying first law of thermodynamics to the light bulb. And that is why this is zero, that is Q, and that is a negative quantity because it is work being done on the system. So you try to understand those things. Now let's, <clears throat> let's do the same thing for the first five seconds of its operation. This is when it is operating already. Now for the first five seconds, how do you apply the first law of thermodynamics? First five seconds. For the first five seconds, how do you apply the first law of thermodynamics? So let's say it was shut off. You come into the room and turn it on. From that moment onwards, five seconds. What do you think is delta U? Just tell me positive or negative. Positive because it is increasing, right? The temperature it was cold and slowly it warms up, so that is positive. W is a work done on it electrically, and you know how much it is. So that is Q, uh, and this is minus minus one sixty. So you get something positive equal to Q plus 160. What should be Q in order to make this side positive? In order to make this side positive, what should be Q? It should be negative. Will it be greater than 160? Less than 160. So Q is less than 160. Now, um, numerically, numerically it is less than 160. Okay? Numerically Q is less than 160. Because if this is less than 160 and negative, then automatically the side is going to be positive. And that also makes sense because initially it is not spitting out the same amount of uh, heat and light as it is doing right now. Right now it is spitting out exactly 160 joules, but previously it was not. Now another example that you can quote over here is not for a light bulb, but
but for a hot plate. For a hot plate, let me give you the wattage of the hot plate. 1000 watts. That means 5000 years. So for a hot plate, how does this thing work? Is the temperature of the hot plate increasing in the first five seconds? Yes, so that's positive. Is work being done? Now this minus sign is exactly here and this is Q and that is W. Uh, work done. Work done on the hot plate or by the hot plate? On. So it's negative. And this is the heat energy coming from a hot plate. Do you think it's really hot? As soon as you turn it on five seconds, you can keep your hand on it. By the time it warms up, you can tolerate that heat. It's not much at all. So this is going to be a smaller number. It will be negative because it's coming out. So if I have to take a rough number for the Q in the first five seconds, if I'm going to call it 1000. So negative 1000 plus 500 to 5000 is equal to how much? plus 4000. This is going to be the change in internal energy in the first five seconds for the hot plate. You get it? What happens with time? Not first, as, as time progresses what happens to this number? Keeps increasing. This minus 1000 becomes higher and higher because it's getting hot. And eventually it comes to a point where this is negative 5000 and that will be a positive 5000 and this becomes zero. That means a hot plate reaches a certain internal energy and it does not change any further. You get it? Do you understand this? <coughs> so the why is it delta U equal to zero? Because U is not changing any further because the temperature is already steady. The hot plate is not going to go hotter and hotter and hotter because in that case it will burn out. It reaches a certain temperature and kind of stays there. You can't make it like super hot. Now, work done. What are the different kinds of work? You can have mechanical work. What is the work definition? Work done definition from last year. When is work said to be done? How much work is done? By a force. And what is the equation for work? FD. FD. Work done is equal to FD. If this is a mechanical work done if I'm going to really push an object. If I'm going to apply a force and displace an object, then this is an equation straight away for it. Now, this is mechanical work done. What about e electrical? You already know it. Electrical work done is power times, which is also VIT. V is the voltage, I is the current. Power is VI. You know that, right? Power is VI. So, VIT. So, how much is the work done by your hot plate? You know how many volts you're operating it on? 110. You know how much current is drawing? 10 amperes times a time. That will be the total work done. You get it? This is electrical work done. Uh, in fluids, what is work done? What is work done in fluids? In solids, this is what it is. In solids, the work done is FD. If I want to push this book, I apply a force and it displaces and it's straightforward. You're moving with the car, you apply a braking force, stop the car in such a distance, you know how much work is done by the braking force. That is this. In a fluid, what is going to happen? Is it pressure times area? You're half right. <coughs> Let's check it out. Like for example, if you have to do work, 
So you're applying a force on a certain area. So basically you're creating pressure, right? You're creating a pressure. And if you move the piston from here to here, you're moving it by this displacement D. So the work done is FD. The work done is FD. But what is F in terms of pressure? PA. Work, uh, pressure, uh, force is PA because pressure is force over area. Pressure is force over area. Therefore, force is PA. So this is PA and then it's D. What is this? Is that volume? Check it out. See, initially the volume was this. What is AD? Change in volume. AD is this part, which is delta V. And that is the equation for work. So work done in fluids is P delta V. Work done in fluids is P delta V. So three kinds of work done. One is uh, mechanical, which is FD. Electrical work done is VIT. In fluids, is going to be P delta V. Now we also saw, just now we saw in our examples, VIT, how we applied VIT. And solids, we already done so many times how to find the work done. And now this is in fluid. So if you're talking about a fluid movement, then it's P delta V that's going to come. You can do a lot of work on a fluid such as air or gas. Why can you do a lot of work on a gas but you cannot do that much work on a liquid? You can see this equation and tell me the answer straight away. How is it possible that you can do a lot of work on a gas but not much on a liquid? Because gas is compressible, a lot compressible. A liquid is not that compressible. How can you change uh, a thousand ml of water to smaller volume? You need a tremendous amount of, even if you apply a big amount of pressure, you can't still compress it too much. Yes, there's a little bit of compression you can achieve, but that's a tiny bit, right? It's only a tiny bit. So solids, cannot compress, like if you take a steel bar and you apply a pressure, can it change the volume a lot? No. Liquids, almost the same as solids, not a big difference. Gases, tremendous. In a gas, you apply a pressure, you can change the volume easily because gases, all the atoms are far apart, there's enough room and that is why you can do a lot of work on a gas but not on a liquid or a solid. Use this equation. Now, after you understood this part, let me give you another example now. Let's talk about a balloon. So here is a balloon. Now this balloon has been sitting in this room for quite some time. The balloon has been sitting in this room for quite some time. Now what we're going to do, we're going to pop the balloon. We're going to just pop the balloon. And now you are going to apply the equation for the balloon's popping event, pop, popping instant. So popping of a balloon. Is that right? 1L, 2L. Okay. So popping of a balloon. In that event, what do you know about any of these quantities? Okay. Let's talk about this. Uh, you, in, while you're popping, what, as the popping goes on, are you putting in heat energy or taking out heat energy? during the popping event. Are you supplying heat energy to the balloon? No. Is the heat energy drawn out of the balloon? No. So that is zero. 
it's a very quick process. There's hardly any time for heat flow back and forth. So this is zero. What about the next one? Is the work being done on the balloon or by the balloon? Like, what formula are you going to use for that? Why do you say it's on? Well, it can pop by itself. Uh, we are just initiating the process. We are not, we are just trying to initiate the process. The popping can happen by itself. Can a balloon pop by itself? So, so we are not actually the ones who are doing the work. So while the balloon is popping, so the, with a the pin, if you are trying to poke it, that is just to initiate the popping process, you are not doing work. How much work are you putting into that? Nothing. Now, while the balloon pops, is there any other form of work that's coming in? Using the knowledge that you have already. While the balloon is being popped, Huh? Pressure in the air. Pressure is high inside. So as the balloon pops, what is the balloon trying to do? Because the pressure is high inside, it is pushing the atmosphere outwards. And thereby, is there a change of volume? There is a change of volume, a positive change of volume. So is work done by the balloon? Yes. So is it positive or negative? So it's a positive thing. So zero here, and this minus is from the equation. And you know W is positive because work is being done by the balloon as it is popping. So if that's the situation, what do you think is going to happen to delta U? Zero minus a positive number should be what? When is delta U supposed to be negative? When it loses internal energy. What's the proof that it has lost internal energy? What kind of proof will tell you, yes, it lost it? So, no. Like this table, if I say, oh, this table somehow lost internal energy, what's the proof for you? <laughs> temperature. If the temperature is lower, you can clearly say, oh, yes, it lost internal energy, right? So when you say something has suffered a delta U of negative, that means it has lost temperature. It's lost heat from inside. Which means what? The balloon fragment, after it pops, should be cold. It should be cold. Have you felt it any time? After, as soon as the balloon pops, try to put your hand on the, balloon, on the fragment and see it will be chill, cold. It will be cold. Why? First law of thermodynamics. Because Q is zero. Work is done by the balloon, pushing the atmosphere out. And therefore, this is supposed to be negative. Make sense? Yeah, so you can apply the first law of thermodynamics and reason out certain things that you actually see. All right, another example. Room freshener. You know the room freshener? If you keep it pressed, how do you apply the first law of thermodynamics? If you just keep it pressed, are you putting in heat energy or taking out heat energy deliberately? No. Is work done by the can or on the can? Again, you're pressing this, uh, what do you call it, a release. It's just to release. That's it. You can actually press it and tie a you know, string on it. You can leave it pressed. Or you can just burst it. All right, so this, uh, the pressing part of it is not the work done. The work is done by what? By the compressed material from inside as it is coming out, right? So work done is positive. Same, same situation applies. What is expected to be delta U? Negative. Have you felt the can after you press it for some time? Super cold. It will be very cold. Now, fire extinguishers, you know those CO2 type of power, uh, fire extinguishers? If you keep it open and this thing is coming out from there, you can see frost build up around its mouth. You can see frost building up. It's so cold that just frost builds up there. So you can actually cool something down if you can actually do this. Take the, apply the first law of thermodynamics. 
So if work is done somehow by, then this is going to be used. Consequence. Now let's talk about a bicycle pump, not the electrical one, but the physical pump. Have you seen that pump? Okay. Yeah. When you are taking a bicycle pump, how do you apply this first law of thermodynamics for a bicycle pump? Are you deliberately putting in heat energy or taking out heat energy? No. So that is typically zero, at least initially. Are you doing work on the bicycle pump? Yes. yes. So that is typically zero, and that is you're doing on. So that's negative. You get it? The, you are doing work on the bicycle pump. <coughs> bicycle pump is not doing the work, but you are doing work. So that's negative. So negative times negative, positive. So delta U is going to be positive. And what does it mean? Delta U positive implies that the bicycle pump should go warmer. Have you felt it? After you pump, feel the bottom of the bicycle pump, it'll be, it'll be hot. The bicycle pump will be hot at the bottom. Or, or for that matter, any pump. If you pump it multiple times, it will start heating up. And that is straight away a consequence of uh, first law of thermodynamics. You can apply first law of thermodynamics in so many Now, uh, thermodynamic processes thermodynamic processes there are different processes in thermodynamics and they are isothermal and you can automatically say what it is. What is iso isothermal means? Isothermal? Iso? What is the meaning of iso? Isotopes. Iso. Come on. I'm pretty sure you've done so many things. Isomers, you've done isomers. What is that iso standing for? Uh, so? yeah, that's, uh, same. Iso simply means same. Okay? Isomer. Now you can reflect and see what is that isomer. What is isotope? Same what? Same element, same proton number. Right? That's why you call it isotope. Isothermal means constant temperature. Isothermal means constant temperature. So T is constant. And delta T is zero. Right, Nick? T is constant and delta T is zero. That is called isothermal. And then other processes are isobaric. Isobaric, isobar, bar, same pressure. same pressure. Bar is a unit of pressure, old unit of pressure. So isobaric means constant pressure. Constant pressure. I saw some books lying outside here. That was also useful. <laughs> so isobaric means constant pressure. Isochoric or isovolumetric. Isochoric or isovolumetric. I think you are mostly you will be you know hearing this more than that. Isochoric or isovolumetric implies constant 
constant volume. And now we have to incorporate these things into the first law of thermodynamics properly. So when you say, if there is a process that is isothermal in nature, what do you know about U? U is constant. So delta U will be zero. Do you understand that? So isothermal process will have delta U is zero. That means it's not getting hotter at all, constant temperature. Isobaric simply means constant pressure. So you can actually write down this delta U is equal to Q minus P delta V. Because that's your work done. Now we are focusing on gases. For gases, the work done is this, P delta V. P is the pressure, delta V is the volume. Now, if this whole thing is going to be true, then what process is that? It is an isobaric process because delta U will exist, pressure is still there, and so on. So this will be isobaric. For isothermal, what is that? Isothermal process. Like this tube light is right now going through isothermal process. What is isothermal process? Q minus W, which is this. So if a gas is undergoing isothermal process, then Q minus P delta V equal to zero, which means these two should be the same. All right? Isovolumetric. For isovolumetric, constant volume means what is delta V. And that means what is P delta V. So this means W is zero. Isovolumetric simply straight away means no work is being done. Okay. So you can have isothermal, constant temperature, isobaric, constant pressure. Isochoric, which is isovolumetric. These are three different processes. And there's another process called adiabatic. Adiabatic process <coughs> is when Q is equal to zero. Adiabatic process is when you don't add any heat or you don't take out any heat. It's like a quick process where Q is zero, like the balloons pop. So the balloons popping is an adiabatic thing. Normally an adiabatic uh, process is a fast process. An isothermal process is normally a slow process. Isothermal process is normally a slow process. Adiabatic process is a fast process. where Q is zero. That means you're not putting in heat, you're not taking out heat. It's too fast. And when this is zero, you can see the equation is delta U is minus P delta V. <coughs> and we saw the examples of the balloon where delta U was zero. And since P delta V was the work done by the balloon, that was positive, so minus of a positive number was a negative number here. So delta U was negative, that's why it was seen as cooling down. So adiabatic process is a fast process where Q is equal to zero, so changes can take place to the internal energy. Isothermal process is a slow process where uh, temperature is somehow held constant temperature is held constant, this bulb, why is it at a constant temperature even though it is continuously being worked on? It's because it is dissipating heat at the same rate as it is coming in. You understand? If it is dissipating heat at the same rate as it is coming in, then the temperature stays steady. Why is my body temperature 98.6? It's because the rate at which my body is trying to uh, promote the heat buildup is the same rate at which I'm losing heat to the surroundings right now. But when you start running or jogging, immediately 
the amount of heat being produced in your body is higher than what is being dissipated to the surroundings. And so overall, you start building up. Okay. When Jacob runs, his body temperature goes up and he starts sweating. Right? All that can happen in even a small time. You can see that those changes taking place. That is, so slow process, isothermal. Now let's look into some graphical illustrations of the same thing. Pressure volume. A graph of pressure volume. If there's a process that is going from here to here, what process is that? What is that process? A to B. Isobaric. Isobaric because it's constant pressure. So A to B is isobaric. And you can see very clearly that the volume is increasing from V1 to V2. So delta V is positive. What is delta V? Final volume minus initial volume, right? So delta V is positive. That's what you see in this picture. Delta V is positive and it is isobaric. So if it is an isobaric uh, process, will work be done? Will there be work involved? What is work? P. Delta V is positive and so work will be? Positive. Work is positive. That means what? The system is doing work. The system is doing work. So if the volume is increasing, that means system is doing work. If the volume is decreasing, then you are doing work on the system. Like if you take a bicycle pump and push the piston inward, what is happening to the volume? It's decreasing. And that means you are doing the work. You understand? So when delta V is positive, Expansion is taking place and for expansion work done is positive. That means work is done by the system. So work is positive means work is done by system. And whenever work is done on the system, the volume should go back. Now what is this process? What is that process? ISO? Isochoric or isovolumetric, B to C. Isovolumetric. B to C is isovolumetric. And I told you when it is isovolumetric, V is constant and delta V is zero. When V is constant, delta V is zero. And when delta V is zero, W is zero. No work done. All right. On a P delta P V graph, how do you find work? On an F D graph, how do you find work? On an F D graph. On an F D graph, how do you find work? Area. Area is work. Same way here on a PV graph. Work is? So what is the area of this section under the line? Work is equal to area. And that's why it's P delta V. This is delta V. You get it? So P times delta V. And what about the area of this line? How much area does this line make with the x-axis? Zero. That's why no work done. Right? This one has no area. That's why no work done. So isovolumetric uh, process is a process where there's no work done because volume is constant.
that line is called an isothermal. It's called an isothermal. What do you mean by isothermal? Constant temperature. So the temperature is constant. What's the relationship between P and V? Inverse. What law? What law is that, Nick? I don't know why all the time Nick's are coming in. Nick? Yeah. For some reason, even the other classes. Every time I have to somehow call Nick. In all classes when I'm doing it. I have to I have to somehow use the same name, Nick, occasionally. Like a people whose name is it Nick? No. They are Nick's. I can say you mess up a lot of people next to one everyone. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I mean like every time when I see someone like that, I mean I say, all right. Constant temperature. So this is at a constant temperature T. Let's call it T1. This is Boyle's law. P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. <coughs> the product of P1 and V1 is equal to P2, V2. This is Boyle's law. The graph is an isothermal because the temperature here is the same as the temperature here. The temperature everywhere on this line is a constant. So those lines are called isothermals. Now what is this line? That's a different isothermal. That's also isothermal. But at a higher temperature. So as the thermals go this way, the temperature, because you can see this, at the same pressure, now the volume has changed, which obviously means temperature has increased. So this is a different temperature T2. So this and this, these are called isothermals. Now if you look at a weather map, you can see those isothermals drawn on the weather map. Have you seen those lines? Of course, those are iso, uh, you know, it's not isothermal. Some of them draw isothermals, some of them draw uh, constant pressures. Like they'll show which regions are at the same pressure. So they'll show the low pressure and high pressure and all that. But there are sometimes drawings for temperature so to show exactly how the, where is the heat flowing and all that stuff. So these are called isothermals. That is an adiabatic. The movement from here to here is adiabatic. And this is an adiabatic expansion. What you see right now is an adiabatic expansion. Whether it's expansion or contraction, you can just look at the arrows. If you look at the arrows, now if I'm going to draw this line this way, that means it's expansion, right? If I'm going to draw a line facing this way, that means it's compression. So expansions, compressions. Now this arrow is pointing downward simply means it is going from P1. Some pressure, okay, P1, V, whatever. I'm not, I'm not referring to this now. This is not the P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. Again. Okay, let me call this T1 then. T1 and that is T2. All right. So the isothermals are now T1 here and T2 here. So P1, V1 over T1 is P2, V2 over T2. Where is the V1 over here? This is V1. And V2 is right there. 
So when it jumps from one isothermal to the next isothermal, that is adiabatic. <coughs> okay. 